you can see that. Perfect. So hi everyone, my name is Nicole. I'm the president of the Venezuelan Student Association here at FSU. Welcome to our international coffee hour. Today we're going to be um, demonstrating or Chef Jesse is going to be demonstrating. We're just going to be talking about it, uh, how to make this drink that we call chicha. So what is, you may be asking, what is the Venezuelan Student Association? So we call ourselves Venza. And we're just a group here on campus that is really open to all types of cultures. You don't have to be Venezuelan to take part in our organization, which is one main thing that we have had been asked in the past. We always have many different uh, students come up to us and they're always asking, oh, do I have to be Venezuelan to join? Of course not. We have all different cultures um, part of our organization. And it's even better like that because we get to learn about everyone's different backgrounds. So we are here to create a family setting for those that of course Tallahassee isn't their first home. Many of us come from different parts of the United States, from even other countries. I know that our eboard member here, Alexia, she comes from Panama. So we're definitely all open to new ideas and just new backgrounds and learning about each other. So definitely a family setting that we're striving for. And now I'll pass it over to Maria. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Maria. I'm the event coordinator for Vensa, um, and I'm happy to be here with you all um, and to discuss a little bit about more um, about what Venezuela is. So our capital, Caracas, um, a great city. I recommend you guys all when it's a lot more safer to visit. Not probably not anytime soon because of everything going on, but a beautiful city, great culture, great people, amazing food. Our official language, Spanish. You know, so. Um, weather season, so um, it switches off between wet and dry. Um, and we are home to the highest waterfall, Angel Falls, and I hope um, to go visit one day because I haven't been able to go myself. So definitely a big goal of mine to visit Salto Angel. If you didn't know, fun fact, it's in the movie Up, that's what they're trying to get towards. So a little some Venezuelan culture in there for you in Disney. Um, it houses one of the largest national parks in the world, Canaima. Um, fun fact, which, May not, may not be also about that's my aunt's name they named her after the park so <laughs> um all right um and it is one of the most 10 um most biodiverse countries in the world with you know mountains rainforest desert so we have a little bit of everything that most people don't really know so it's pretty awesome no it's not letting me move forward oh here we go sorry about that still new to this whole screen sharing thing so basically, if you haven't been connected with us before and you want to know more about Vensa, about our organization, about what we do, definitely connect with us on Instagram. Here's our Instagram handle. Uh, you can scan this barcode and you can be added to our group me and, or you can add us on Facebook at Venezuelan Student Association at FSU. And that's where we post uh, updates about what we're going to be doing. We're going to be having an arepada coming up, which is the last event of the semester. We're going to be having many different uh, special menu items. So definitely something new to look forward to. It's gonna be coming up these next coming weeks. I know that finals are coming up, so for sure before then. So be on the lookout, definitely join us on there to make sure you don't miss out. And if you wanna reach out to us about any questions you may have, anything, don't hesitate to reach out. We're always open to everyone, any suggestions. So you can always send us an email as well. And now over to Alexia. All right, my name is Alexia Harana, I'm the co-event coordinator of Venza, and let's talk a little bit about, about chicha. So there's different types of chicha around the world, like Peru has its own chicha, like I know Bolivia also has one. So in Venezuela, we like it sweet, and also the chicha is like from the countryside, so you can have all types of chicha. Uh, there's one called the chichandina, so there's a lot of variety there. Uh, yeah, Mexico has it too, and I, I tasted once, and it was really good, but still, I, I have a bias with the Venezuelan one, <laughs> so it's very easy to make, it's only five ingredients, it's rice, milk, cinnamon, salt, and water, and if you want to be really extra like me, you can put Nutella, it's not in the recipe, my grandma hates it, but I love it, so yeah, and it's one of the most popular drinks in Venezuela. So yeah, uh, we're gonna see Chef Jesse make it and hopefully everybody wants to like have a bye and like you can, guys can try it at, at your house. So that's cool. 
Yeah, now we're going to stop sharing and. Yes, that. I'm going to take it over. Oh, Jesse is showing his face this time, but I'm going to give it to him right now, too. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> hey, Jan. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Coffee Hour in the Globe Kitchen here. Uh, thanks, Vincent, for uh, the great presentation there. And yeah, we, today we've got uh, Chicha de Arroz. Uh, from Venezuela. And as uh, Alexei was telling us, uh, chicha is kind of widespread throughout uh, Latin America. And uh, as you know, the name has traveled, but the versions are very, very distinct. And uh, this, this version is very distinct to Venezuela. Uh, and um, I think originally the name may have uh, come about down in the Andes. And uh, like, if you go down there to like Peru, Bolivia, and you order a chicha, uh, oftentimes you might end up getting a corn beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so, one of or, the things with chicha is that it comes from the Gran Colombia. That's why everybody has it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's a wide variety of drinks under like the chicha name. So one that we've made here for coffee are, uh, one year was a chicha morada, which is really interesting. Drink too is made with purple corn. Uh, and it was, it was really great. But this, this is an awesome version. And I'm really excited to learn about it. Uh, because it's so delicious and refreshing and, and fulfilling at the same time. It can be uh, like a dessert almost, or it can be like a snack. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really easy to make too. So let's get into the ingredients here. Um, I've got rice. So that's our base for this is rice. So I've got a long grain rice down here uh, that I tried a version with. And then I also got this short grain rice. Um, which this one, this arroz rico, this is a short grain rice from Puerto Rico. So I was like, all right, you know, it'd be nice to try a, a Hispanic rice at least. And then this Mahatma long grain rice. Um, and so I'll kind of talk about the differences of the outcome once we get a little bit farther. I got a couple cinnamon sticks here. I've got two cans of condensed milk. And this is right now, the version I'm showing you is gonna be a sweeter version. If you want it to be less sweet, you can just do one can of condensed milk and then like two cans of evaporated milk or one can of evaporated milk and a cup of like fresh milk. Uh, and then, all right, so one can of evaporated milk, a little bit of vanilla, some powdered cinnamon, and then yeah, a little bit of salt we're gonna add in there too. Uh, so the technique on this is really pretty, pretty straightforward. You are gonna need a couple of um, special tools. Well, probably just only one. I got a stick blender here, and this is nice because it's easy to kind of show you you know, how, how it's going, but you can just use a regular blender at home too. Because what, you know, this is a kind of like a dessert drink, um, but it is, it is going to be very thick. We want it to be a thick dessert drink. And so you do have to blend it up. We don't want chunks, you know, definitely big chunks of rice in there at all. So, all right, let's come over to the stove and we'll get started on the beginning here. here we're we're going to go with the long grain on this one. Okay, so what I've got here is uh, 10 cups of water. And we're going to get it up to the boil. A bunch of different recipes online have you soak the rice ahead of time for a day at a time. And I wanted to make this recipe more kind of quick for you and you didn't have to think ahead so much. So um, my version, you don't have to soak ahead. So I'm going to take that one cup of rice to the 10 cups of water. Make sure that water is boiling. And we're basically going to boil this for about 30 minutes. The long grain rice, 30 minutes. The short grain rice, I had to go about 45. And then we're going to pop that cinnamon stick in. And that's going to season the water and season the rice. You're going to get this nice background cinnamon flavor. And um, yeah, so this will come to a boil here in a minute. And you can let it sit, but you want to come back to it and stir it on occasion because that rice will um, sink down to the bottom and end up sticking if you don't stir it every, you know, couple minutes, five minutes or so. But uh, I'm gonna let this cook for a minute, but I think uh, Alexia might have a few more details about the dish she wants to share. Oh yeah, uh, so fun fact, if you say you want chicha in Panama, it means like you want juice. So you have to be careful. Also chicha can be fermented, so you can put alcohol. And one of the things in Venezuela is that chicha is from the countryside, so, um, basically, it can also be used for like religious rituals. We have in Tachira, one of the states in Venezuela, uh, we have a virgin called La Divina Pastora. 
So when uh, it's the time for like to praise the Divino Pastora, a lot of people do uh, uh, chicha andina. Chicha andina, uh, it's not that sweet and it has alcohol in it. So it's different depending on like, <laughs> depending on like what type of chicha do you like? Like the type of chicha I like is sweet because I used to drink chicha with my mom and my dad when I was a little kid. Because every time that you were in Venezuela, like, oh, okay, I'm just getting out of the school. I'm very tired. And you're like, oh, I got a good grade. And then your dad's going to be like, oh, let's go to the chicha stand because you got a good grade. So it's kind of like that in the city. It's very like, oh, this is for like little kids. Uh, but in the countryside, it's more like, oh, it's like fermented. So be careful, <laughs> really be careful because one time I remember I went to like the countryside, I was like in a vacation. I was like, oh, I want chicha. So the thing is that I drink like a bottle of that, like this. And out of nowhere, one of my cousins told me that has run in it. And I was like, wait a minute, it has run? And I just like lose it. So you have to be careful, please. You have to be like, okay, is that chicha and Dina or is that chicha like the kids? Because, you know, it, <laughs> it can be uh, a little mistake. But yeah, and if you guys are more interested in like Venezuelan cuisine, I have a lot of resources. There's this uh, chef called Sumito and he has a lot more. Like if you guys have like, I have a thing for tequeños. So I have a video for tequeños, chicha, flan. So really like, <clears throat> if you guys want, just let me know. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's pretty it's pretty like a comfort drink. I drink chicha when I'm sad, when I miss Venezuela. I went from Venezuela like in 2016. So it's a really nice it's a really nice time. Awesome. That's that's great. I I really enjoyed my sample batch yesterday and it was, it is just, to me, it's pretty comforting and refreshing. So it's like nice and cold. Cause it's like, it's, this recipe is kind of like a, like a, a rice pudding almost, but it's thinned out a little bit. And to me, rice pudding, those flavors are just so satisfying and, and bring back memories, you know, and it's just like a, a, you know, a more liquidy drinkable version. It's just so, so fun. All right, so I'm going to set this one pot that I've been stirring over to the side and let that finish. I've got another one that I've finished cooking over here. So you can see that rice really, after 30 minutes, really absorbs a lot of water. And this is getting nice and thick. And those, that long grain rice really soaks up the water and it really breaks down pretty quick. And, and the grains are all exploded. The short grain rice takes a little bit longer to cook. So I cook the short grain rice for about 45 minutes. And honestly, the difference to me um, is more of the texture of the final uh, uh, chicha. So the so long grain rice is gonna be thick and nice, but the short grain rice kind of just like in in like mochi in Japan, it's, short grain rice has that little bit more chewy kind of texture. And even when you blend it, it kind of transfers over. So it's Oh, it's a little bit thicker, maybe, but it just has a little bit more of a fuller mouthfeel. So um, I kind of like short grain rice, but the, the long grain rice is excellent too. I'm not sure which one would be used in Venezuela so much. I don't know if it matters that much, but I'm just messing around with it personally. All right, let's head back over to the prep table. Okay, so we're going to remove the. Ow, oh, that's hot. Oh, it's really hot, actually. Cinnamon stick. And it looks like I might have lost a little chunk of it in here. It's okay, it'll blend up. Okay, so from here, we're just going to take our stick blender. We're going to blend this up. And at this point, this is kind of looking like more like a rice porridge, maybe. But we want to blend it till it's pretty much liquid. All 
Okay. So at this point, we're going to add our milk. So let's add our evaporated milk. That'll help it start cooling down a little bit here. And we can blend the evaporated milk in. condensed milk. So the condensed milk is also going to add to sweetness because this is milk that's been boiled down with sugar. So we're going to go for the extra sweet with another can of condensed milk. Yeah, you definitely don't have to add the second can if maybe that's not up to par with you, but the sweeter, the better in my, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I would say the second can doesn't make it, it's not extremely sweet. It's just like, it's more just like dessert sweet, you know? Yeah. One can to me is almost like more of like a breakfast cereal sweetness. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so the, the one can, yeah, I mean, maybe that's better for like a, you know, a snack or a breakfast. Two cans is more for like a dessert. Totally. Okay. Like, like if you guys want to have a good companion for the chicha, what I was thinking is that. I mean, for breakfast, you can have arepas, but also there's this thing called pan dulce. And mm -hmm. pan dulce is pretty famous in Venezuela. So the way you eat, uh, you eat it uh, in the breakfast or maybe like for brunch that you have chicha, very sweet. And then you have the pan dulce. Uh, it's not, it's, <laughs> I mean, if you don't like sweet, uh, if you're trying to, you know, get on the diet, <laughs> be careful with that. But it's sensational. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have a little bit of vanilla. I'm just going to drop a small amount, about a teaspoon or so. And then also I'm going to do a little pinch of salt. A little, little pinch. Okay, so... At this point, our chicha has all the ingredients incorporated um, and uh, it's good to go for the most part, except for that it is still very hot. And so adding those room temp milks was good. It's cooled it down somewhat, but it's definitely, if we poured this over ice right now, it would just melt all your ice and you'd kind of have like a, a watery kind of mess. So the key here uh, for this recipe is to get some plastic wrap Cover it most of the way with plastic wrap. Let me grab a little bit. And you're going to let it cool at room temperature for about an hour or two. Depends on how much surface area your pan has. But you basically want it to cool down to room temperature. And by putting a little bit of plastic wrap on top, it should prevent the top of the chicha from forming like a thick skin. So if you just let it cool off and evaporate itself, the top forms a really thick skin. And then if you stir it back in, it's gonna be lumpy. You're just gonna to have to blend it back up again. If you can just fix it and blend it, that's fine. Um, but uh, to prevent that, just let it cool with a little bit of plastic wrap and it, it'll help it stay moist on top. Uh, and then you can also just take it and refrigerate it overnight, serve it the next day. But I found that uh, it works out fine just to cool it to room temperature and then pour it over the ice. And um, you still have a nice thickness to it. And it right now it is so hot, it looks pretty thin. You know, this is a little bit, this is like eggnog maybe, but as it cools, those starches thicken it even more. So honestly, once this cools down uh, in the fridge, it's going to be quite thick. And so 
Uh, if you ever needed to thin it back out again, you could always add a little bit of milk to it, any kind of milk, just some evaporated milk, some fresh milk, whatever, just to thin it out. You could even add a little bit of water just to stir it in so it's pourable. If it ever gets too thick, then it doesn't pour or it's really hard to pour. So I'm just going to let this sit tonight. Um, I'm going to grab my ice real quick. So yeah, here's my batch that I made yesterday, and you can see how thick this one is. I guess maybe you can tell me. I'll pour it into the glass, but once it's, it kind of sets up in the fridge and, and it's nice and thick. So to serve it, we're going to fill up some glasses with ice. And we're just going to pour our chicha in. Okay. Awesome. And then when you pour it on this ice too, it it'll kind of simultaneously thick it up, but also the ice melts a little bit, so it kind of has thicker parts and a little bit thinner parts. And then we're gonna do a little bit of cinnamon as a topping for sure. And here we go. Laura really wanted a little cinnamon stick garnish, so let's see if I can get it in there. All right. Whoa, don't drop the camera. Okay. And there we have our Tita de Arroz ready to drink on a hot afternoon. Maybe next week, probably not today so much, but <laughs> it's going to get hot very soon. So uh, uh, thanks, Spencer, Nicole, everyone, for. Uh, sharing this recipe with us today. I'm super excited to make it and learn about it. Uh, definitely going to keep this in our back pocket, bring it out for international coffee hour in person. We could serve this to everybody without a problem. Uh, so we will definitely be bringing this back again. Uh, thanks again for all the interesting tidbits, and um, I will see you all next week. Thank you, Jesse. That looked amazing. Thank you. Yeah. See y'all later. Thank you so much. Bye.